You know how every day we think to ourselves, there's no way this presidency could get any crazier? <laughs> well, today, once again, we were proven wrong. Breaking news. We're following major breaking news. A senior Trump administration official admits to being part of a battle inside the White House to frustrate the president's agenda and his worst impulses until he leaves office. The New York Times publishing the unprecedented op-ed anonymously. The author delivering a blistering assessment of the president. Holy shit. <laughs> There's a secret group of people within the White House actively working to curb President Trump. Which is wild, because this means this whole time we've been dealing with the watered-down version of Trump? <laughs> You're telling me that this is the better version? <laughs> Like, I thought was, this was the peak of crazy. This is diet Trump? That's what you're saying? <laughs> Yo, that's like finding out two girls, one cup was the PG version of the clip. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was the R-rated version? There was no cup? What the hell are you telling me? <laughs> and this anonymous official talks a lot about how bad things are. So bad, in fact, that Trump's cabinet even considered a drastic move that has never been done before. This official goes on to say that, given the instability many witnessed, there were early whispers within the cabinet of evoking the 25th Amendment, which would start a complex process for removing the president. But no one wanted to precipitate a constitutional crisis, so we will do what we can to steer the administration in the right direction until, one way or another, it is over. Okay, wait, what? So Trump is such a danger to America that his cabinet thought about using the 25th Amendment to remove him from office, but then they decided not to use it because it would be too messy? The 25th Amendment is there so that you can use it. It's like there's a sign that says, in case of emergency, break glass, but then these guys are like, I mean, we could break the glass, but then there'd be glass everywhere. I mean, <laughs> maybe we can just try steer the fire in a different direction. It's less dramatic. Yeah, let's talk to it. And now, people are wondering why this anonymous official revealed all of this in the first place, but apparently, it's to make us all feel better. The official writes, it may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know that there are adults in the room. We fully recognize what is happening, and we are trying to do what's right, even when Donald Trump won't. Okay, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> because before this, I knew there was turbulence. But now, someone just came on the PA system and was like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the pilot is actively trying to crash the plane. <laughs> but don't be alarmed. We're doing everything we can to stop him. Mikey's got a pretty good choke cold, and I've said some pretty harsh words. So please keep your seatbelts fastened and enjoy your peanuts and tax cuts. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> and now... And now, Trump is already calling the whole thing fake news. That was predictable. But the crisis... The crisis atmosphere inside the White House was already being corroborated this week by legendary journalist Bob Woodward, right? He's written about presidents for the past 50 years, and he's one of the reporters who broke Watergate and forced Nixon to resign. So he's as legit as they get. Bob Woodward's bombshell book is rocking the White House this morning. Bob Woodward describes the Trump presidency in the midst of a nervous breakdown. The book also a remarkable portrait of aides taking extreme measures to block their boss. Former economic advisor Gary Cohn reportedly preventing the president from withdrawing from a trade agreement with South Korea by swiping a letter off his desk. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> Donald Trump can be made to forget about a major policy decision the same way a baby forgets about its parents when they play peekaboo. <laughs> Just like, well, I can't see your face anymore, so I guess you're gone forever. <laughs> I'm an orphan now. Very sad, folks. Very tragic. <laughs> He's gone. And Woodward's book also gives us a glimpse into how Trump's legal team is preparing him to be interviewed by Robert Mueller. And unfortunately, it's not as simple as stealing papers off of his desk. Woodward describing the president's one-time lead attorney, John Dowd, so convinced the president would commit perjury, he staged a practice interview last January. That session so rocky, Woodward reports Mr. Dowd later told Mr. Trump, don't testify. It's either that or an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> don't testify or you'll end up in an orange jumpsuit. How badly did Trump have to lie in a fake interview for his lawyer to tell him that? It was like, okay, Mr. President, let's practice. Uh, please state your name. Michael Pence, damn it! 
And by the way, by, by the way, orange jumpsuit is also what Melania calls Trump's naked body. Yeah. <laughs> And look, I know it can be fun to hear all this dirt on Trump coming from his lawyers or his economic advisor, but what's not as much fun is when it's coming from the guy who's in charge of the bombs. And after the president told Defense Secretary James Mattis he wanted to assassinate Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad for a chemical attack on civilians, Mattis reportedly told the president on the phone he would do it, but then telling a senior aide, quote, we're not going to do any of that. Yo, this is incredible, man. The commander-in-chief ordered an assassination of a foreign leader, and his secretary of defense just ignored him like he was an Amber Alerts. That was it. <laughs> and apparently, under Trump, military operations now work like Bumble. Like, Trump can't initiate it. He has to wait for the military to swipe, and then if they're both into it, they can assassinate someone together. That's how it works. <laughs> so, look, obviously, all of this stuff is crazy, but at some point, I think we've got to stop saying that it's a bombshell, right? I mean, Trump is just doing a lot more Trump than we thought he would, but it's not a bombshell. Like, the day it comes out that Trump secretly works out and reads Shakespeare and teaches <laughs> kids how to code, that's when we can call it a bombshell, <laughs> right? Right now, these motherfuckers just need to break the glass.